Hey guys, it's Species Sims, and we are back with more Solstice, and Kazia and Galen are about to get their freak on, so, um, yeah, hopelessly romantic. We're gonna pop in here, but before we get into their little interlude here, bloop, we're gonna go read the things that popped up after the last part, because we did not uh, do that, so. Uh, Galen represents an arcane represents arcane builders who constructed the city in cooperation with the faculty. We don't know anything about that. Let's see. Yanni doesn't know anything. Nothing new about Istvan. I feel like there should be so many more things because there's such a huge page and yet there's nothing about any of these. Okay. Kazia found Lev's body almost three weeks after he vanished. Lev had multiple dog bite marks on his arm. It's possible Lev died of natural causes, a stroke, or a heart attack. Galen thinks Lev could have performed exhausting rituals that led to his demise. That's... I'm thinking. I kind of actually, like, believe him on that respect. Uh, before he came to the city, Sam was a thief. A, Sam was a thief. A good one, too. Slava is in love with Isfan. Laura believes the affair helped cause Lev's madness. Although... Sam was a thief a good thief, so he could easily have broken in and gotten the plans and helped Lev. You know? And then the dog bites on his arm, like, obviously the dog bites are from Lev's dogs. I mean, some's dogs, but... Anyway. Make yourself comfortable. Just don't disturb the plants or touch anything on my desk. Don't worry, I know my way around. It's not the first time I was invited to the doctor's quarters. Really? Tell me, Captain, how many doctors have you gotten friendly with? Not as many as you might think, but my job isn't always as boring as it is nowadays. Sometimes I end up with a free, few bu a few bruises here and there. Oh, that's busy. Here and there, you say? I'd love to give those places a special treatment. Woo! Always the giver. <laughs> you have no idea. Is it time to play, doctor? <laughs> that's so funny. I'll need that drink of them to survive your sense of humor. It's not that bad. Wine, brandy, or something stronger? Wine and a little something extra should do the trick. Here, bottoms up. Did you just spike my drink? I sure did. Let me guess. I'm going to be paralyzed and left at your mercy. Quite the opposite. Amber Poppy relaxes smooth muscles. Relaxes smooth muscles? Your blood vessels dilate, flooding your brain with oxygen. The effects are mild euphoria and enhanced sensual pleasure. That sounds awesome. Amber Rush. Ha! So you know it. I literally just gave you a date rape drug. Know it. Feel it. Where we are. Where were we? I'm trying to decide whether I prefer this to be a medical examination or a criminal ex interrogation. I was kind of hoping for both. Oh, yeah? I was hoping we'd... F oh, God. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping we'd fuck. Wow, that's a little much. <laughs> this is... We went from like, ooh, romantical, and okay, we keep talking about sex, to then just throwing that out there. Wow. Oh! Oh! Oh, hello. What a hopeless romantic. You know, they got a little extra going on in this one that they did not have in Cinder's. Like, there was like some flirting and stuff, but there was like... There's no making out or banging each other. Like, holy crap. Ah, good to see you, Yanni. It's about time. So who's the killer? What? Don't play dumb, girl. You need to name a killer if we're to put this irritating case to rest. You do realize I only just saw the body. You can't seriously expect me to produce a verdict so soon. Hmm, you're right. That wouldn't be believable. Is that all you care about? I need to put this behind me and get back to what's worthy of my detention. Discoveries don't happen on their own, you know. Discoveries? You mean astronomy? If you must over oversimplify it, then yes. Your mind was trained to tackle technical minutia. I'm taking on some of the greatest mysteries of this world. Or is solving a murder also beyond your level of competence? Such things require time. I haven't even slept after that ridiculous gathering. Me neither, yet I'm fine. Stop with the excuses and produce a believable culprit. Would this evening be a lax enough deadline for you? I don't suppose I have much choice. Not unless you want to admit to the murder yourself. So, fine. But we need to announce the verdict publicly. 
Make sure everyone gathers in the marketplace after the lamps switch to night mode. I'll share my findings. You want a spectacle? Why? Not all people are as immune to fear and doubt as you are. This town needs a public display of justice. They need to feel they're part of a group that can overcome its problems. I have no clue who would even know that. How are we going to figure this out? We're going to have to pick someone and that's going to be wrong. Because there ain't no clues. All they've demonstrated lately is impotence in the face of a single saboteur. I, we're just going to blame Istvan because that's just easier. Perhaps, but this is about perception. If you want to restore confidence, this is the way to go. You make a convincing point. I'll order my guards to gather everyone in the marketplace this evening. Thank you. Make sure Sem and Galen are there. So it's one of them? Sem, I would expect. The man's a criminal, and everyone knows he can't be trusted. But Dr. Galen? Why does he have to do with anything? Did something come up during Lev's examination? I can't reveal this to you just yet. Can you reveal it to me? I don't... Excuse me? Your reaction to what I say, be it surprise, disbelief, or anything else, has got to be genuine. I can be genuine whenever I want. <laughs> Slava will know, Kazia might as well, and everyone will judge accordingly. If you want this problem solved, you need to find out at the same time as everyone else does. Gah, I don't like it, but there's logic to what you're saying. I'll keep my curiosity in check for now. Before I go, I'm beginning to feel annoyed. I need a decision on an in-depth analysis. And that's what you'll get. Indulge me, please. All I need is an answer. I'm usually far less patient. Fine, ask, but be quick about it. The initial I, his romance with Slava, the chamber Love died in. I came across Love's diary. He wrote about a person who helped him, who probably led him to do things he wouldn't have on his own. He didn't mention a name, just the initial I. You're the only match in this city. Are you accusing me? Young, reckless, and jumping to conclusions. You're the opposite of what I'm paying for. Perhaps I am, but I pay enough attention to notice you didn't answer the question. There are a myriad of explanations. Lev was insane. He could have been talking about himself, couldn't he? Slava never mentioned Lev having multiple personalities. That would be rather hard to conceal. He was lonely. Sometimes he spoke to himself, imagined people, even if there was someone. They helped Lev with ancient rituals, the power of the waters, and technology. I'm almost flattered you think it was me. It's true that not all pieces of this puzzle fit together, but you can't deny your name is the only one that fits. I never considered names something of value. Perhaps I should have. Perhaps they do hold power over men. Then again, he did a line, so it could have been a lowercase L, because it could be Laura, because she knows, like, tarot cards and shit. So, you know, I mean, it could be Laura. <laughs> You've given me an idea, though. I must research it before I can share my findings. Now go, ask your foolish questions somewhere else. I know you're impatient. Let me just... No! Enough is enough, girl. Do you take me for an idiot? Think I don't notice you're stalling? You have one day to find the culprit. Make use of it. And you'd better deliver a believable justification for your choice. It's you, because you're a dick. Perfect. Yanni, you're heading back. Does this mean you're done examining Love's body? Who killed him? Shouldn't you be asleep? And why do you assume it was murder? I didn't assume anything. I'm merely showing polite interest. I'll stop now if that if it's that big of a deal for you. Me caring about Lev? He could have hanged himself for all I care. How did you know he was hanged? I knew it! I knew that wacko would crack eventually. Was it Slava's romance that finally got to him? Or... Oh, I see. He wasn't hanged, was he? You just couldn't help but use a dead man as the butt of your joke. I'm sorry. You just made it too easy. My grandpa used to say you should judge a wolf not by its teeth, but by its prey. Again, sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. Have a nice di- Fine, it's boring here in the dead season. This is the first thing even close to entertaining. So spill up. There's nothing to spill yet, I'm afraid. I'm quite sure the city will be fine, though. Why would you say that? There are the three people determined to uncover what happened to Lev. Galen, Kazia, and myself. Each an expert in what we do. I imagine we should be able to deal with any problem. You misunderstand. Why would you have to assume, assure me the city is safe? Did Lev do something to endanger it? We found him in a chamber nobody knew existed. It seemed we gravely underestimated his knowledge. He was annoying, but he wasn't that smart. I'd say someone helped him. So at least one other person knows about that chamber of yours. One person can take a secret to the grave, but two people knowing it means it's not a secret anymore. Or that soon it won't be. You know what I'm getting at? So a hidden chamber appearing out of nowhere in the family's district doesn't surprise you? Nothing surprises me. Yes, I'm sure you've seen it all at the respectful age of 20. 
Gahiani, stop with the condescending tone already. You don't need to be the damn sage of the north to know this place is full of secrets. There is one thing that interests me deeply, though. Who do you think did it? Honestly, I have no idea, but... I don't want to accuse her, because that's weird. He could as well have tripped and fallen. A senile man in a dangerous place under... Oh, suboptimal lighting condition? It makes sense. Or maybe he just had enough of people asking so many questions and offed himself. Suicide? But he could have done it years ago. Nothing in particular has changed. If anything, he'd grown even more hopeful about finding Kala recently. A hopeful person wouldn't be suicidal. Very good. I must admit you're observant. So he didn't kill himself? I don't know. He could have, or someone could have killed him, or none of the above. Who knows? I never know when you're being serious, but I suppose it's wise not to reveal anything, especially to me. If someone rounded up the usual suspects, I'd be top of the list. I was a member of the tribes, after all. We have a lot of reason to blow this city up. Damn, we've even tried. I thought you stir or severed your connection with to the tribes. They don't take kindly to traitors, that's for sure. But I learned all the tales and legends. Lev asked me about them until my ears bled. I could have killed him just to stop the questions. Besides, the tribes think anyone getting too close to Kala deserves to be skinned alive and left to die. That's what my grandma used to say, at least. So I guess I'm the easy target here. I'm glad I went for a drink at the inn that night. Why would the tribes punish someone who has gotten close to Kala? Only a pure woman is worthy of witnessing such power. Sex has always been a huge taboo for us. Can you believe it? Why do you ask, though? Was Lev skinned alive? You know I can't tell you anything. Stop asking. By the ancestors, you have no who clue who did it, do you? Look, I can't help you. I'm not sure I would even if I knew anything, mind you, but luckily I'm spared that decision. How kind. I'll give you a piece of advice, though, and I don't usually do that, so stop sulking and listen. Don't vex, is don't vex Istvan. Excuse me? I'm sure you've heard stories. The sheer amount of gossip on him should make you think. He's ordered people, children, even infants killed. Sometimes for crimes they committed, sometimes for fancy. Obviously, infants did not commit crimes, aside from being born. I mean, if you call that a crime. So, I'm just saying. Like, that's crazy. I don't mind. He always was an efficient ruler. But if you make a verdict he doesn't like, you'll suffer. Not to mention pointing to Isvan himself. But you wouldn't be that stupid, would you? So, should I lie or sentence an innocent man? I said I can't help you. Then please stop wasting my time. I need to announce the verdict tonight, but I haven't set foot in my workshop since that dumb party. So pardon me while I go review actual evidence. As if that would change anything. Huh, so something about women and blah blah blah. I don't think there's any innocent women in the town, aside from Yukone, because she might not be like a hussy. Constance, we know, is getting busy with shit. We know Slava, obviously, because she was a married woman and she's fooling around with Isfan. Laura, maybe? Mm. Oh, 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 oh! Just as I expected, you're a kinky little monster. Wow. That, my dear sir, was but a glimpse of my kinkishness. Um, they got super dressed super fast. I mean, I'm kind of glad because I don't want to have to cover things up, but geez. I'm not sure that's a word. It is now. Spirits, that was intense. I need to rehydrate, and so do you. Did you choose to travel so far north, or were you banished for being a, se a, a sex-obsessed maniac? Or maybe you ran out of new men to sleep with. These are all beautiful compliments. Sadly, none are true. Now stop trying to make me blush. Drink up. Thanks. I heard stories, of course. Islanders are supposed to be great lovers. At one city I lived in, men and women of your origin would charge small fortunes for their services. As they should. Love making it is an art my people hold in high esteem. Were you a regular guest to the pleasure houses? I visited plenty of them in my mercenary years, and later when I became a guard. They tend to attract all sorts of shady characters. Sex requires imagination, and imagination demands freedom. As my mentor used to say, some, peop some people can only feel free when they have others in their power. That's the origin of all malice. She should have just magically appeared. It would have been great. I suppose that's one way to look at it. I also heard about your people's other gifts being linked to imagination. Is that true? You heard that? That's hardly a topic you discuss in a market. I'm guessing you read it in a book, but why would a simple guard study academic treaties on magic? Isn't curiosity a virtue? Sure, for scholars and explorers, 
Not for mercenaries and foot soldiers. But what you read is only half true. The ability to con uh, conceive and visualize extraordinary scenarios is a prerequisite for all who attempt to master the craft. The stronger your ability to clearly imagine different possibilities, and the more flexible you are, the more potent your skills become. So that's how you bend reality to your will. I wouldn't use that metaphor. Try seeing it more as negotiation rather than forcing it to do your bidding. If you make a good impression and offer enough incentive, reality will become your helpful friend. You make it sound like all your people do is conjure rainbows in nice weather. And what's wrong with that? Nothing. However, I once had the pleasure of meeting an islander in combat. The powers I witnessed weren't based on friendship and fuzzy feelings. An islander warrior from home? They're not allowed to travel or use their arts in time of peace. And we've had no wars for almost a century now. He must have gone rogue. She. Which made my companion underestimate her. The last act of stupidity on a short and violent life. She killed the man? But you survived? How? We dueled for some time, but all I could do was to uh, parry her strikes. It was astonishing how strong and swift she was, and her face had this eerie tint, you know, without emotion. There are potions that can have that effect, but as I said, their use is only permitted in war. What exactly happened? She lost control all of a sudden, went completely berserk. She made a mistake, and I eventually managed to push her to the ground. I stood above her, my sword against her throat, and asked her to yield. She threw herself on my blade. Her face was blank, as if she felt no pain. Sounds horrible. She must have been addicted to battle potions or to battle itself. Either way, that makes her a rogue. We do not value aggression and only fight to defend ourselves. Judging by her gear, she was a mercenary, which probably makes her even more of an abomination among your people. Abomination? Oh no, just a fool who squandered her gifts and died a senseless death. Becoming a spell sword for hire? What was she expecting? Thank you, friend. You realize you're talking to an ex-mercenary. <laughs> Is it awfully wrong to find the image of you covered in your opponent's bloody innards strangely arousing? Okay, that, yes, that's a little creepy and gross, but... I don't see anything strange about it. Why do you think I became a mercenary in the first place? To turn on men. Covered in blood and innards. Okay, I'm a little... No, that was... Hmm. That's not exactly how I expected that conversation to go. Fulfilling your darkest fantasies, I presume? Ha, don't push it. You have a sick imagination, Galen. Hey, my untamed imagination is what makes me so good at what I do. I'm pre basically paid to be depraved. But you're right about one thing. Killing people isn't the best profession one can choose in life. Why did you do it, then? I've always been good with the blade and bad with money. I quickly learned there was no pleasure in taking lives, though. The only thing that satisfied me was using my skills to protect others. That's why I mostly took assignments from merchant caravans needing escort. Eventually, I grew tired of the constant traveling and decided to settle down. So you moved to a city and became a guard to help those in need. Yes, I wanted to make a difference. And a warm bed. And they call me an idealist. So have you changed the world for the better? You might say I was being naive, but I genuinely believe that with a bit of goodwill, smarts, and my keen sword, I would make the place safer for everyone. Instead, I came across vice and corruption. I had no idea... Oh, instead, I came across vice and corruption I had no idea existed. The things people are capable of when they can gain power or wealth. That city was a cesspool. Don't tell me you gave up without a fight. I tried, but the other guards were either broken, apathetic, or bought by the crime lords. When I refused their bribes, they tried to kill me. At least I disposed of some of them that way. But one can only sleep with eyes open for so long. Ah, I finally understand. You chose to escape the far north and settle in a city where vice is law. That way no one, not even yourself... Oh, chose to escape too. Okay. That way no one, not even yourself, could blame you for giving up. Is that a professional diagnosis? Only if it's accurate. Unfortunately, no. I did escape, and I knew what people said about the Jewel of the North, but that's not all there is to it. What I hated the most was the constant pretending. That city was built on lies. And this one's built on what? Sincerity and goodwill? Hardly. You can joke about it, but it really makes a difference. This place is just as filthy and corrupt, maybe even more so, but at least nobody's denying it. Honesty is a virtue, even for criminals. Does crime exist if there are no laws to define it? Let's not get too philosophical about it. The only crime you can commit here is breaking your compact. Unless you're a member of the family, is right? Even they prefer not to abuse their power too often. They need people to believe compacts offer a semblance of security. I see. There's very little left of your need for justice. Don't you understand? There can be no justice. 
I wasn't expecting you to have such a dark outlook on things. You seem very frank to me. Weren't you listening? Honesty is a virtue. Even someone like Isfun comprehends that. You're a complicated man, Kazia. Hope I didn't sound too morbid. I'm a big boy. I'll live. I'm sorry if I ruined the mood. Come here. Don't worry, I'm fine. I don't need a hug. Really? I get the feeling that's exactly what you need right now. I don't need comforting. I think we both have matters we should attend to. With what the city... With what the city facing... Oh, what with... Oh, I was like... Oh my god. It's like crazy raining all of a sudden here. Okay. What with the city facing imminent disaster and everything? The city survived centuries. It can wait another hour. A whole hour? Don't haggle. Are you there, kid? Shit. Is that who I think it is? I'm afraid so. He wants me to examine his eyes. I have it all day! You shouldn't keep him waiting, you know? You're right. I'm coming! Please, come in. What took you so long, lad? A toddler like you should be perkier than... Oh, hello, Captain. Good day, sir. I was just leaving. Doctor? Thank you for your visit, Captain. You were extremely helpful. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. Well, Galen, looks like you succeeded where even Constance failed. If I didn't know you well, I would think you were a spy. Maybe I am. You're no match for her bluffs, though. Enough dilly-dallying. I want you to examine my eyes. Boop. Okay, we're gonna stop. I'm gonna stop right here. Okie dokie. So, yeah. That was interesting. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much longer we have of this. Um, I feel like if Yanni's gotta make... We've gotta make this decision by the end of the day, then we don't really probably have that much left. But who knows? I don't know. So I guess we'll figure it out. So I will see you guys next time and we'll see what happens. So yeah. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.